So what with all the crazy technological advancements we're seeing with battery technology and solar and all of those things, I think, you know, you could start to think, do we really need dual battery systems? And I wanted to put that idea to a test. So now if I was running a normal vehicle, a uh, double cab or maybe a, a big SUV, I wouldn't even bother asking the question, do you really need a dual battery system? Because you've got plenty of space in a vehicle like that, that you can put the big battery, it's out of the way. Most of them you can fit the secondary battery underneath the bonnet. It just works. So you can get all of that power and the convenience and everything in one place. But now when it comes to something like the Jimny, it's such a small vehicle. It's got such a small engine bay. There's barely any space in the back. So to put something in there is gonna really take, a, take strain on the vehicle. You'd have to go a very expensive route and buy a lithium battery and run a dual battery system and do all of that stuff. But that is a possibility. But I wanted to play devil's advocate and I wanted to look at something that's small, lightweight, weighs just a couple of kilograms and really has the potential to be a bit of a game changer. But it's not all rainbows and unicorns. So let's look at some of the kind of practical features on this. It's got a built-in sine wave inverter. It's got built-in USB. It has two plug outputs and one plug input. It's very simple. On off switch for the inverter, it gives you a simple battery readout. And on the back, it has one cigarette lighter. Now, that's quite a lot of functionality out of this bad boy and I mean it really does it quite well it's not too loud when the fan kicks in it's not distracting it's not too annoying but there is a fan that will kick in when it gets hot and when it's under load especially when it's charging and pushing out at the same time and then the battery that's inside here is a 37 amp hour um, lithium battery so it's really really lightweight I'm not too sure on the specs I'll put it on the screen um, but I think it's somewhere between five and seven kilograms it's, it's impressive in its weight. Now it also has a really good form factor. For me, I like having the handle, I like its roughly square shape, um, and it, it fits very neatly in the vehicle. You know, the access of everything is, is fine. I mean, you can plug, these plugs don't hold too tight, so I find with two prongs and things, obviously because they're like a universal plug, they are, uh, you know, they, they can fit a lot of plugs, but they, they don't hold on to them too well, except for the, this laptop plug that I have, uh, the UK plug, works really nicely. So then obviously the USB outputs, uh, they got decent power output, and then these two output plugs is where you could plug something like a refrigerator in um, with their Brad Harrison. So you could use you power your fridge from here, or you can use the cigarette lighter on the back. I don't like or recommend using a cigarette lighter to power a fridge because it can come out and then you risk your food going off or defrosting or whatever and it's just gonna put a huge amount of strain on the battery having to cool everything down again. So I would, I would say go for a strong output and a, a strong connection like a Brad Harrison or something like that should work perfectly. Now, the next thing is where my concern comes in with this. It's the input. Now, you can only have one input in at a time. So you can either charge via your cigarette lighter in the vehicle or the solar panel or the AC adapter. You can't charge it from multiple things at the same time and I mean that's fine because I guess it's portable so I mean you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna use it, you connect it up to the solar panel. One of the biggest drawbacks from a system like this for me is that you have to charge through the cigarette lighter. That's fine when you're charging a cell phone, that's fine when you maybe perhaps powering a fridge, but the problem comes in is when you're charging through a cigarette lighter and you're running something off of this, inverter for example, the battery can't charge fast enough. If you're running a fridge and you're on one bar, 
and you having to drive all day to run your fridge and you're charging this at the same time, by the end of the day you will still be on one bar because it's just powering the fridge. If you power the fridge from a 12 volt socket in the car and you charge this separately, that works fine. But because of the input on here is so limited in terms of power, whereas you look at something like a DC to DC battery system, you know, that is pulling 25 amps. So you can plug a fridge in and even on a hot day at full draw at like 5 to 8 amps, you're still charging your, your auxiliary battery with another 15 to 17 amps. It's still going to charge up in a reasonable time. Now think about this battery for example. This is a 37 amp hour battery. If you could get that charging capacity of a dual battery system on a battery like this, you'd charge this thing full in two hours of driving. That's really cool. Now one of the big things again with the input system on this is that it's limited to I think it's about 6.7 amps. So even on a really bright sunny day and that solar panel is pushing 8 amps on my other dual battery system on the National Lunar System I've got a monitor on there and the MPPT solar input can tell you the amperage drawn from the solar panel and you wouldn't be able to fully utilize that panel with this pack. I might need that 8 amps off of, off of solar and it's only giving me 6 being limited by the system you want to be able to fully utilize that panel and that panel is not cheap you know I paid seven and a half thousand or seven thousand eight hundred rand for that panel and I want to be able to utilize every little milliamp that I can get out of it. The sine wave inverter actually works quite well it's more than powerful enough to run my laptop which is an issue it's a very very hungry laptop it uses about 230 watts and these plugs are capable of 300 watts each um, or somewhere around there so what I love about this thing is its portability uh, and it's, it's truly portable you're not going to be straining yourself carrying this thing around moving it around it really it works well and the fact that it's got the inverter built in I'll be honest with you we get a lot of uh, load shedding in South Africa which is where the government turns off our power for fun and um, just to see how we deal with things and I've been able to work for about four hours running off of this just my laptop alone so that's that's pretty good that's pretty good for me you know I I struggle when I'm camping running a dual battery system with running my laptop because it just feels so power hungry that I'm nervous that I'm I'm uh, endangering critical things like the fridge and all of that stuff for the sake of a computer so this is where it kind of things get interesting for me because I love a dual battery system they are rock solid whether you're running something like a, a just a solenoid kit or you're running a DC to DC system or whatever it's a it's a solid solid solution you can run your fridge for two three days of a hundred amp hour AGM battery that's really impressive and the thing is out here in sunny South Africa, it gets scorchingly hot. So, you know, we had a 45 degree day the other day. We have 39, 35, 30. But, you know, a summer's day is well above 30. And it bakes inside the car. And your fridge works overtime. So it's going to draw a hell of a lot of power. And you need something that can keep up with that. I found, because um, we tested this system on our cozy bay trip I found that I couldn't really charge the fridge for a full day um, it has the power to do it but there's uh, something happens with the voltage regulation on the fridge this is a low voltage battery so it starts at just above 12 volts and it depletes below 11 volts so the problem is the voltage protection built into the fridge won't actually allow you to access this. So what would happen is even though the battery has power, the fridge won't allow it to draw that power because the voltage is too low on the pack. So that was something we found quite frustrating. So eventually we just ended up using our fridge pretty much as a cooler box 
Um, it, it wasn't ideal. And, and that's where I kind of think this thing is cool, but it's no replacement for a dual battery system. I know for a fact the dual battery system would have just worked like a charm. So, you're looking at a little system like this, where I find this thing really shines is right here. I want to use the laptop. The laptop battery is dead. I need to power it. Boom. Easy. Simple. It's lightweight, it's small, it fits into the vehicle in neat places. I think this thing still has incredible value. And this is still something that I would love to carry around with me on trips. I would love to have at home in the office. I would love to, it just would, on photo shoots, every, anywhere. I can power my two video lights off of here. I can, for me, this, this pack has got so much versatility. And sure, I could do the same thing with a dual battery system, just plug in an inverter and convert that whole system into something very similar to this. For me, what I want to do is I want to permanently install my dual battery system like so many people do that it just becomes part of the vehicle, it lives and breathes in the vehicle all the time. And I, I would love to have something like this as, a, as a, a subsidiary battery that I can run it dead off my laptop. You know, I can run it dead and not be worried about losing critical systems on the vehicle. But I would love to just keep the dual battery system, you know, keeping the vehicle, the fridge, all of that stuff, the camp lights, completely separate from my creative usages. Because this is nice to charge batteries and things like that, it does work well, you know, it really does work well. What's been really nice using this is seeing how lithium works and how it's very impressive. It is very impressive. I, I would like to see something like this maybe fleshed out a little bit more. Maybe, you know, multiple inputs, you know, open up the, the amperage of what can actually be input. I'd love to see uh, a readouts of your power coming in, your power going out, things like that, rather than just, you know, a couple little dots. It works well enough, but it doesn't really tell me much. I, I just know whether it's flat or not flat. And I'm a bit of a nerd, and I love to know all of those little geeky informations. But yeah, I mean, overall, my experience with this, you know, Flexo Power Lithium Triple Four, has been, it's been pretty positive. It's been pretty damn positive. And I know they're busy working on a, a bigger battery system, something that's, you know, a bigger lithium battery in it. And I think that'll be interesting to see how that develops. But batteries are a complicated situation and, you know, it's a very in-depth personal thing because everyone's usage is different. For me, something like this would work perfectly for my creative needs. Um, for some people, they don't even need something like this. They just need a dual battery system. They're only worried about powering their camp lights and their fridge. So that's what's important to them. Some people want, this is not enough. They want a bigger battery, a bigger inverter. They want to run a hairdryer. They want to run a coffee machine. They want to run a Nutribullet. I don't know. People want to do weird things. Personally for me, that's my opinion of this. I think it's great. I don't think it's a replacement for a dual battery system. I think there is still 100% merit in getting a dual battery system. And yeah, I would, I would buy one of these. I would buy a dual battery system. And I bought the solar panel. So here's a little bonus thing. Let's talk about the solar panel for a second. So this is my first ever solar panel. And I must say, I'm super impressed how portable it is, how easy it is to set up, and how much power it generates has actually been quite incredible. So I will see on a good sunlight day between six and 8.7 amps. And it's pretty consistent, it's pretty reliable. Look, it's not great in low light. It's, you know, it is a flexible, you know, kind of foldable portable panel, but it really handles its own. And on a nice, beautiful day like this, it really pushes great power. And it's so worth having. It's a begrudging purchase when you do it, but once you have it, it's free power. So, I love it. So as always, thank you for tuning in and watching this video. And this is something a little bit different from Roam Over Landing. But I'd like to start taking a bit more of an in-depth look into some of the products and things that I use out in the field. And give you guys some of my opinions on it. So I hope you enjoyed. 
and I'll see you again on the next adventure. Bye for now.